A new study from Boston University shows young athletes might be at a greater risk of CTE than we may have thought. Our health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is joining us this morning. But first, can you just start out with the basics of what exactly is CTE? So CTE, chronic uh, traumatic encephalopathy, is exactly as it sounds. It's a chronic condition as a result of repeated head trauma that causes encephalopathy or dysfunction of the brain. And we actually first recognized it in the 1920s when we noticed that boxers who kept getting hit in the head, whether they had concussions or not, we're starting to develop some sort of changes in their thinking patterns and their behavior in their impulse control. But it is a condition, unfortunately, that we can't usually diagnose while somebody is alive. It's usually only made after they die based on an autopsy. You cut up the brain and look under the microscope. And what you see is that these injuries to the brain cause deposition of a protein. So you're almost like when the brain is kind of healing from the injury, it puts down something called a tau protein, which is junk in the brain that causes some of the symptoms of CTE. Wow. I know this is such a big concern for so many parents. I mean. Even me, my husband is a former hockey player and MMA fighter, so I think about CTE all the time. Mm -hmm. Talk about what was the most alarming from this study that you found. I was really struck by a few things. The first is what you mentioned, Anusha, which is that young athletes, normally we thought CTE really took a lifetime mm -hmm. to sort of manifest itself, and it was repeated trauma to the brain. These were athletes under the age of 30 who wow. died, and 40% and of them had CTE, wow. with a few of them actually having advanced stages of CTE. So the fact that it was affecting young people, to me that was really concerning. And the second piece of it was this is the first study that reported CTE in a woman. And again, we've thought of it mostly as a kind of a male-dominated disease, mainly maybe because of selection bias as well. Now, what we don't know is the, is the people that died, was there something else that made them more susceptible to CTE that also made them more susceptible potentially to dying? But to me, it raises an alarm in my head, especially if, if I was a parent and I had a child that played contact sports, where this type of head trauma is it something we really need to start looking at more closely. I, I'm, I am thinking of the, of the parents maybe at home are going, okay, wait a second, what do I look out for? What are the symptoms? How is this diagnosed? Unfortunately, by the time the symptoms manifest, because the early ones can be very nonspecific, mm -hmm. like you know, a little irritable, you're a little annoyed, like teenagers do that anyhow, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's hard to tell. And a lot of times people can have those symptoms with repeated head trauma without CTE. And that's another thing that, that's been reported, mm -hmm. is that athletes that get repeated head trauma can have problems with impulse control, even without having a diagnosis of CTE. So it's very hard to tell just based on symptoms. What I would say is a couple things to think about. If your child is playing a sport that does give them repeated head trauma, that is something to talk to their coach about. And they're now actually thinking of tools like helmet trackers mm -hmm. that can count how many times you get hit wow. in the head so that if it's crossing a certain threshold, we really need to think about backing off. The other thing you need to think about is if you've had a family history, because we know that genetics plays a role as well, because some people get hit in the head over and over and never get CTE, and others will get that CTE. So if you've had a family member or anything like that that's had CTE, certainly something to think about. Out. And then finally, I would talk to your child's pediatrician if they're exhibiting any kind of behavioral changes because the advanced signs, speech difficulties, difficulty talking, those types of things are really, you know, it's almost too late by the time that happens. Really good advice for parents. I know it's a scary thing. You don't want to stop them from going into the sports that right, they want to be right. in, but still at the same time, you really have to be aware of signs and symptoms and, and watch out for that head trauma. Dr. Coley, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it.